Now I'm mainly a blues player, but you can use the Mumu chord method to play any style of music because it's very similar to the method that's used on a standard six string guitar. On a standard six string guitar, use open position chords C, A, G, E, and D, and you make them movable to find any chord you need. On the three string, it's a little different. Use movable positions of C, E, and A to find any chord that you need. And you could find basically three different positions for the same chord on the fingerboard. And there's actually a fourth if you consider the open position at the 12th fret. And this will give you many possibilities for figuring out or arranging your own songs. The easiest way might be to go online to your favorite search engine and type in the artist or group's name, the song that you're looking for, and the word chords. And chances are, if the song isn't too obscure, you'll find what you need. But beware, I found that sometimes these free chords online are not always correct. Another way would be to go to your favorite music store and get a fake book. A fake book is simply a collection of songs that contain the lyrics and the chords, and it might be specific to an artist or a group, or it could be a compilation like favorite blues and country songs. Now the best way to start learning a song is to listen to the original recording without your guitar. Sit there and listen and tap your foot. Get a sense of the rhythm and the timing. Now also, many of the old time songs I play are very melody line driven, which simply means the words, the lyrics are very pronounced in the structure of the song. So I would encourage you to sing, even if you don't know how to sing, because it'll help you understand the phrasing of the song and how it's put together. Now additionally, many songs have verses. These are the same chord progression going round and round, but the lyrics change. Then every once in a while it goes off to the chorus. This is another set of chords that goes round and round and returns to the verse. So now you're getting the structure of the song. Finally, one other thing, it might go off to a, a lead solo or what they call a bridge, which might be another set of chord progressions. So just by listening to the song, you're already getting a lot of information and you don't even know the chords yet. Okay, so how this lesson started was a friend, Hal, from Cigar Box Nation in a discussion group asked a question. He wanted to play Bob Dylan's Blowing in the Wind and somewhere he found that the three basic chords were supposed to be G, C, D but it didn't sound right. So I think this is what's going on. The original key to that song is D. So the three basic chords, he should have been in a different key. The key of D is D, G, A. Now furthermore, a very popular thing that was done, say, a lot in the 60s with the folk revival movement was to play simple open position chords. And if you wanted to change keys, you used a capo. So if you put a capo on the seventh fret of a six string guitar, and you play a G chord, it's going to sound a D chord. So then the next question is, what's a capo, how does it work, and how do we use it? Now a capo is a mechanical device that functions like a movable nut. You can take the capo and clamp it across any fret, and it's going to change the key of the instrument. Now you usually clamp it a little above the fret and once you clamp it down you're going to have to retune because it knocks it out of pitch. You're going to have to be able to name the notes of the strings. So for instance, this is a D chord. The second string open is the D note. That's the root. It names the chord. If I work my way up the second string to the fifth fret, that's a G note. Clamping across there, now I'll have a G chord. Now what I'd like to also explain is they used to call these cheaters because it was a very simple way to change the key of a song instead of having to figure out the different chord positions. But that's really not the case and I'm going to talk more about that, why you would want to play in different keys. One last thing to clarify this I want to show you is, here's a D chord. If I play that open position G chord, and it's called open position because it has open notes in it, I'm going from a D to a G. If I use my finger like a capo and bar across the seventh fret, that's an A chord. If I put down that G position, it's no longer playing a G, it's sounding a D. So here I'm going D, G, 
here I'm going A, D. So I hope now you understand a little bit more how a capo functions. So let's look at an ultra simple arrangement of this song. How many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? And how many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? And how many times must a cannonball fly before they're forever banned? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. So now that you have the basic song, why not use other chord inversions and create another arrangement? So instead of using this open D, I'm going to use the D with the root on the third string. I'm going to use the same G, but instead of using the A at the seventh fret on the second string root, I'm going to use the A with the first string root. Um, another thing is I took my picks and I turned them backwards, so it'd be more like a flailing banjo effect. And in the 60s, when everybody was playing guitar, the big folk revival, they used to teach what was called pattern picking. So the right hand would do the same thing over and over and you just change the chords. So our pattern is going to be uh, pluck the second string and then strum, pluck the third string, the low third string, and then strum. So like this. How many roads must a man walk down? Oh, they call him a man. How many seas must a white dove sail? For she sleeps in the sand. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. So the last thing I want to talk to you about, why would you want to play in different keys? Mainly for your voice, because it's easier to sing in certain keys when you're playing certain songs. So you got to experiment a little bit. Now, I'm a mere student when it comes to singing, but you notice I was struggling a little bit with the key of D. If I was going to perform this song, I'd want to play it in the key of C. So I have two choices. I could either tune this instrument down. Right now it's in a D chord. It's tuned A, D, F sharp. I tune it down a whole step to G, C, E, and I can use those same chord positions. No problem. Or I can do what's called transposing, where you figure out the chords in a different key. Very simple. If you use the chord chart I give you on CD6, you're using tones 1, 4, and 5 from the major scale. Those are the three basic chords. So we already covered it. We talked about key of G was G, C, D. The key of D was D, G, A. And now the key of C is C, F, G. So if I wanted to play this song, I can just go... How many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? How many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? See, I, for me, that seems I could sing that stronger. So it's very important if you're going to sing to make sure you match the instrument to match your voice. Don't try to force your voice into keys that feel uncomfortable. Enjoy your practice.